I like making reference to this. It's not scriptural, but there are lots of uh, many just uh, good, good lessons, life lessons. Clarence, it's a wonderful life. Remember, he had to get his angels, and so his boss up in heaven, God apparently, um, they had a mission, and he, they called for Clarence. And it was George Bailey. And they said, come Clarence, we need your help. We've been receiving lots of prayer requests for George. Oh, is he, is he sick? No, something worse. He's discouraged. Discouragement is the antithesis to the Holy Spirit and his power. And discouragement has deep roots in Scripture. And it has roots in our own lives. We look back in 597 B.C. It was the first deportation of the kingdom of Judah to Babylonia. And then ten years later, 587, another deportation. Carried off in that first deportation was a prophet. He wasn't a prophet there yet, but he was a priest, and his name was Ezekiel. Later on, in exile, he was commissioned by God to be a prophet. And what characterized his prophecies were visions that he had. And one such vision, which I'd like to share with you today, because I think it's very apropos for Pentecost, and it was the vision of the dry bones. It's Ezekiel chapter 37. He was brought out by the Spirit to a valley filled with bones. Human bones. Just gazillions of them. And that vision was symbolizing the hope and faith of Israel in God. It was dead. Deader than dead. Dry. Gone. It was a wasteland. And what was the cause of that wasteland? Sin. Sin is a wasteland of nothingness. It brings no peace. It brings no joy. And he was beholding that in that vision. And that was a source, sin was a source of profound discouragement in their lives. It lay front and center in this vast valley. Let me just go on to read a little bit what he was, this dialogue that he had with with God. And God said, Son of man, can these bones come back to life? Lord God, you alone know that. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, dry bones, Hear the word of God. Thus says the Lord God to these bones. Listen, I will make make breath enter you, so you may come to life. I will put sinews on you, make flesh grow over you, cover you with skin, and put breath into you, so you may come back to life. Then you shall know that I am the Lord God. I prophesied as I had been commanded. And a sound started up as I was prophesying. And you got to kind of get the Hollywood special effects here in your imagination. This rattling and crackling of bones coming together. (laughs) Rattling like thunder. The bones came together, bone joining bone. As I watched, sinews appeared on them, flesh over them. Skin covered them. But there was no breath. They were just like these zombies. Then he said to me, prophesy, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son son of man. Come, O breath, and breathe into these slain that they may come back to life. I prophesy as I was commanded. And the breath entered them. They came to life and stood on their feet. A vast army. It was a vision. The breath 
in Hebrew is hua. Hua. And it's power. Where was that power now? In the upper room? Where was this power Jesus had promised them as he breathed on them this gospel, which we, we, we read? They were locked up. And it says that fear paralyzed them. They were shivering from fear. And how often we, we succumb to fear in our lives. We cave. We cave in. No, I can't do that. No, no, I'm a... No, it's not for me. We're scared. They were discouraged. But Mary kept them focused. She was there with them. Pray, pray. The Holy Spirit will come. The Holy Spirit. I want to read this little text from the the prophet, from an author, Father Stinenson, about the Holy Spirit. He says, a human person exists for the most part in him or herself. The Holy Spirit, however, is a person who exists in two others. A human being becomes more a person in the measure that he opens himself and gives himself to others. But the Holy Spirit, and this is key, is openness itself. There is such a great difference between the Spirit's way of being a person and a human's way of being a person. The Spirit is not the one who acts. The Spirit is the act. The Spirit is power. The Spirit is life itself. So in Jesus, when he rose from the dead, it was the Spirit. It's, it's hard to understand this, you know. But the Spirit is the love between the Father and the Son, the Son to the Father. And what came to me was this image just so so long ago that I remember when I was a kid. You know, it was when the, when the Incredible Hulk was around that you know that that uh, great that great Lou Ferrigno series, and there is this uh, this this mom. It wasn't in the series, but. It was a story that I had read, and her, I think her daughter was, was trapped under a car, and there was no one to help. I mean, she was, like, being crushed. And this was, you know, she, she wasn't like a workout mom type thing, you know. She was, she was just, you know, slender. But her love to save my child... It's something just took over her with this love. And she actually took the car and lifted it up. Lifted it up. It was the power of love. And that's the power of the Spirit. It's just there. And not only that, but the the Spirit, He comes in fullness and He gives us gifts. Gifts. Wisdom. Oh, great. That's a great gift. Wisdom. To judge and order all all things from God's point of view. Oh, that is so needed. Understanding. To give deeper insight and penetration into the divine truths. Knowledge. To judge rightly concerning the truths of faith in accordance with their proper causes and the principles of revealed truth. Counsel. Fortitude. Piety. Fear of the Lord. A gift. It's not being, oh my gosh, Catholic guilt on me. You know? No, that's not fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is I don't want to I don't want to offend him. I love him so much. He's loved me. He has loved me. I depend on him. There's adoration, there's reverence for him. The fruits of the Holy Spirit come as a consequence from living the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Charity, love. It's not simply a feeling. It's truly an unconditional gift of self to the other. Joy. Joy. A lasting happiness that is received because it's bestowed on us. Peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Longanimity, mildness, faith, modesty, self-control. 
and a head turner today. A fruit of the Holy Spirit. This is a real head turner. It's like, what? Say what? You gotta be kidding me. Really? Chastity. Chastity. A fruit of the Holy Spirit. Say what? Let me read it. Chastity means giving ourselves to God completely, whether as a priest, religious, or layman. All vocations are called to have a chaste way of living, to love properly. Chastity also means, you know, indulging our physical desires within the right context as being sexually pure before marriage and remaining faithful to one's spouse. These gifts and fruits is Christ living within us. So may we all have the strength in abundance and kind of be greedy a little bit, in in a good sense greedy, like Elisha the prophet. May we ask today, as he asked Elijah the prophet before he went into heaven, may we have a double portion of the Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.